Despite being 248 chapters and two seasons into Jujutsu Kaisen, Yuji Itadori still does not have a cursed technique, and this creates a huge problem. He's just not able to keep up with the characters that are relevant right now. So let's fix that. We'll be looking at seven possible cursed techniques that Yuji might possess. These range from somewhat plausible to completely out there, and we'll be starting with Cursed Item Consumption. This ability would basically allow Yuji to gain the effects of any cursed items that he consumes. It stems from very early into Season 1, after Yuji has eaten a couple of Sukuna's fingers and Gojo states that over time, Sukuna's technique might be engraved into Yuji's body. While this turned out to be false, Sukuna could still use his technique in Yuji's body with no issue. And in the manga, Yuji said that he would, and I quote, eat anything to kill that creep. This line alone implies that he might be able to gain the effects of cursed items that he consumes. Cursed item consumption would be a really unique technique, especially if it means Yuji can consume cursed tools in addition to cursed objects, giving Yuji Yuji the effects of powerful Jujutsu artifacts like the Prison Realm, the rest of the Death's Paintings, or even the Inverted Spear of Heaven could instantly give Yuji a huge new role in the story. For instance, if he gains the effects of the Prison Realm, he could potentially contain Sukuna to his body once again depending on if he can meet the conditions for holding Sukuna still for one minute. If he consumes the Death's Paintings, he could gain up to six blood-related abilities and maybe even the poison aspect that all of them have. If he consumes the Inverted Spear of Heaven, he could gain its Curse Technique stoppage effect which would mean any curse technique that comes in contact with him would do little to no damage, meaning that fighting Yuji would come down to cursed energy itself and physical strength, which Yuji obviously has plenty of. The possibilities are endless, but I think the most likely one is for him to consume the other death's paintings. This is because they are a cursed object that Yuji has easy access to as they are all within the storage room in Jujutsu Tech Tokyo. It would also make sense since we know the death's paintings need a host to manifest their abilities, and their consumption might have been hinted a long time ago. See, there is official art where we see Yuji, Chozo, Esso, and Kichizu on a couch together. And in this art, Yuji has six bracelets on his arms and legs, which is the same exact number of Death's paintings that have yet to be revived. As of right now, I think Cursed Item Consumption is the most likely technique for Yuji to have. He did have those weird fin glove things on in some of the promotional material, and I think that could be an application of one of the Death's paintings. There's also Yuki's book on souls, and if that turned out to be a cursed object thanks to Yuki pouring her cursed energy into it, then that could be a reason that he developed a different technique that we'll be talking about in a little bit. But first, we have to talk about another super heavily insinuated ability, blood manipulation. That's right, one of the few techniques that already has two users may become the only technique with three. But the evidence for this is kind of loose. There's two main parts to it. The first comes from this exchange where Yuji thanks Kamo for teaching him some stuff because Chozo is a terrible teacher. We don't know exactly what that stuff is, but like, what do Chozo and Kamo have in common besides blood manipulation? The second was this shot of piercing blood landed on Sukuna. This one is a bit far-fetched, but some people think that this was landed by Yuji and not Chozo, because Chozo did get one shot by Sukuna like one chapter prior. I know this isn't a ton of evidence, but I think it's substantive enough to talk about. But would blood manipulation even be a good technique for Yuji? Well, yeah, probably. Blood manipulation is a super versatile technique, and the first thing that I think Yuji could make great use of is of course flowing red scale. This would further boost Yuji's physical stats like his offensive strength and his speed, as if Yuji wasn't already strong enough, right? This is likely the best application of blood manipulation for Yuji, as it lets him use the technique to extend his advantage and not lose any blood at the same time. But it's not the only application that I think he could make use of. Piercing blood would be an excellent addition to his arsenal as it gives him a much needed ranged option as well. He could potentially even learn Supernova from Chozo since it is the same application as as piercing blood, and there's also a ton of other applications that we probably have not seen yet. This is what makes blood manipulation super versatile. It seems there is no limitation as to what the user can do with their blood as long as they don't run out of blood. This of course brings me to the biggest and only drawback of blood manipulation. Yuji would have to be extremely careful with how he uses the technique in order to not die from blood loss, as I doubt he would gain the ability to turn cursed energy into blood like Chozo and the other Death's paintings have even if he consumes one of them. It is possible that Yuji wouldn't have to worry about this too much since he does know reverse curse technique, but we don't know exactly how reverse curse technique and blood interact so it's kind of hard to say. Now let's talk about the third potential ability that has been insinuated by the manga, soul swapping or body swapping. This one comes from a bizarre two panel interaction between Yuji and Kusakabe, in which it appears that Kusakabe is talking to Yuji from Yuji's body while Yuji is in Kusakabe's body, if that makes sense. These panels were in a huge setup chapter 
character which gives it a bit more weight than the other two abilities we already talked about. Soul swapping or body swapping would be an interesting technique, but if I'm being honest, I have trouble seeing its applications. It would definitely be an ability that serves a plot purpose rather than one that is good for combat, as it is probably the only way to rescue Megumi if Megumi is still alive inside of Sukuna. While we don't know exactly how this technique would work, I think it would require some physical context to manifest a soul swap. This is because physical fighting is what Yuji is all about. Plus, a technique that swaps bodies just seems like something that would require touching bodies. Not in like a weird way. Personally, I think the hit required for this technique to activate has already been landed, and it's this hit that Yuji landed on Sukuna a few chapters ago, as it seemed like some sort of ability activation as it did look different than Yuji's usual hits and even Sukuna noticed something was different. But there's not much evidence for that. As I mentioned earlier, the main use for this technique would be to save Megumi's soul, but that's not the only potential use for it. Depending on how it works, Yuji could swap souls with Sukuna, putting Sukuna in his body and preventing the ancient sorcerer from activating his cursed technique. It might also be possible for Yuji to swap places with the soul of the merged cursed spirit since cursed spirits have souls as was confirmed by Mahito. Soul swapping could possibly also allow Yuji to use the cursed technique of the person that he swaps souls with, since a person's technique is engraved primarily in their body and their mind. This is corroborated by Kenjaku who can use the techniques of the people he inhabits and Sukuna who made use of Megumi's technique while he was inhabited in the student's body. However, in these cases we are talking about Sukuna who had plenty of time to watch Megumi's technique and is, you know, Sukuna, and Kinjaku who has a thousand years of Jujutsu experience and had a year to learn curse manipulation before we ever saw it. So Yuji probably wouldn't be able to use another person's curse technique immediately on Switch. If I'm being honest, I personally am not a huge fan of Yuji getting this technique. It doesn't really bolster his offensive capabilities. I'm pretty sure we all wanted Yuji to have an ability that lets him rival or potentially even beat Sukuna, and this technique probably wouldn't do that. Now we're moving into the original abilities that I think makes sense for Yuji to have, starting with a domain-based ability, Boxer's Fury. Boxer's Fury would be a non-lethal domain that Yuji can draw in a very short amount of time similar to Hikari. In this domain, both Yuji and his opponent get transported into a boxing ring where there is no cursed energy. This boxing match follows official boxing rules set by the Association of Boxing Commissions, which means killing the opponent is not allowed while the domain is active. The two in the ring fight for a bonus once the domain ends, but this bonus is kind of decided by Yuji. It has to be something that they both agree on to an extent in order to make the stakes even, but Yuji decides the details. For example, if they decide that the winner gets additional accursed energy, Yuji decides how much. If they bet that the loser loses their cursed technique, Yuji decides for how long. Some other stakes could be that the winner gains automatic reverse curse technique or the loser maintains their physical injuries when the domain closes. If this final option isn't chosen, both Yuji and his opponent are healed to their condition prior to the domain's opening once the domain is concluded. Pretty much anything related to Jujutsu can be used as a wager. This domain would give Yuji a huge advantage thanks to his innate physical prowess. Being so physically gifted would allow Yuji to win against like 99% of opponents, unless his opponent just happened to be like Mike Tyson or something. This boxing ring style domain is one that I think a lot of people want to happen in a lethal variation. The reason I chose to go the non-lethal route is because I think non-lethal domains are just more interesting than the standard lethal domain. Plus I think it kind of fits Yuji. He has always felt bad about killing people and has tried to avoid it whenever he can, so I think forcing him into a lethal domain would be a bit cruel. I also thought about giving him a different domain based on physical prowess like a decathlon or something because Yuji isn't a boxer by trade, but I couldn't really figure out how to get something like that in a domain, so I'd love to hear your ideas for Yuji's domain in the comments down below. And if this technique wasn't flashy enough for you, don't worry, the next one will be, because it is the Sparks of Heaven. This technique would allow Yuji to hit black flashes much more easily by giving him hyper precision of his cursed energy when it comes to timing specifically. Normally, landing a black flash requires applying cursed energy within one trillionth of a second, but for Yuji, it would feel more like a millionth of a second. This is still really precise, but it is about 10,000 times less precise than a normal black flash if my math is correct. It might not be, I got a C in 8th grade algebra. Regardless, making the space to land a black flash larger makes it easier to land, and that's not considering the zone that sorcerers enter after landing a black flash that makes it even easier to land them, which would then compound with this ability allowing Yuji to hit even more black flashes and hit extremely hard for someone with a fairly average ability, or at least average on the surface, because this technique actually has a second effect. If a black flash occurs when cursed energy is applied to a hit at the last second, what happens when the same is done with positive energy? Well, that is the cursed technique reversal of this technique. By hitting an opponent with positive 
energy, Yuji creates a white flash, which is where positive energy flashes white. When this positive energy makes contact with a cursed technique or cursed energy in general, it will automatically neutralize the cursed energy on impact. This neutralization will last for one full second while the white flash ends. During this time, the person struck is unable to use their cursed technique and cursed energy, but there are no limitations on reverse cursed technique or cursed technique reversals because positive energy cannot cancel positive energy. Additionally, if Yuji's opponent uses reverse curse technique as a white flash hits, it will neglect the neutralization effect. Pretty cool technique, right? While I don't think this ability would let Yuji stand up to the likes of Sukuna, I do think it would allow Yuji to fight some much stronger sorcerers. There are a ton of strong sorcerers that cannot use reverse curse technique and a ton that are not super well tuned into the workings of cursed energy, meaning they would be super vulnerable to this technique. It also fits his character considering how much he relied on black flashes earlier in the series, and considering how his development of reverse curse technique is a pretty big deal. Of the curse techniques that I made up, I think this one is my personal favorite, but we still have one more to talk about, and we'll do so after you subscribe. I know, kind of cringe, but like 99% of my viewers are not subscribed. Even if we could get that down by just 10%, it would make a huge difference in the size of this channel. So if you enjoyed this kind of content, be sure to subscribe, and let's talk about the penultimate ability, Helpful Hero. Helpful Hero is one of the simpler abilities we're talking about today. It basically gives everyone that Yuji fights with a boost to their cursed energy output and a boost to their total cursed energy pool. It's similar to Utahime's ability, but instead of being used outside of combat, this ability only activates when Yuji is in combat. In addition to giving his colleagues a power-up, the ability also increases their synergy, allowing Yuji to fight easily with just about anyone. The reason I think this would be a good technique for Yuji is because almost every fight that he has excelled in has been a 2v1 or some kind of team battle. In fact, even now in the manga, he was sent out at the same time as the rest of the Jujutsu High School squad. Now, obviously this was done to activate the Executioner's Sword, and not because this is secretly the technique that Yuji has, but I think this kind of support ability would work really well for Yuji, and would explain how he has no issue fighting alongside people that he barely knows, like Toto in the Kyoto School event, Ino in Shibuya, or Maki in the manga. I think a technique like this also really makes sense for Yuji from a character perspective as well, and I'll touch on why once we're done talking about techniques. And that brings us to our final technique, Determination of the Soul. This ability attempts to explain precisely why Yuji is so durable. Determination of the Soul would be a passive curse technique similar to Infinity. The effect is simple, the more determination Yuji has, the more cursed energy he generates. But the cursed energy generated from this determination goes directly into reinforcing his defenses. This means the more he wants to live and the more he wants to fight, the more hits he can take. And the less he wants to live and fight, the less he would be able to take hits. If this was his technique, it would explain why he took such a beating from Mahito after Nobara and Nanami's deaths, as that was pretty much Yuji's low point mentally. It would also explain why he took so little damage from Sukuna earlier in the series, as he was determined to get revenge and save Megumi. Having a passive technique like this could also explain why it seems like he has no curse technique, as it's probably much harder to detect a passive technique like this. You might have noticed that none of the techniques we've talked about are completely broken or would put Yuji on par with a special grade sorcerer, and there is a reason for that. In fact, Yuji says it himself. Yuji is just a cog. He's not supposed to be a special sorcerer or the next strongest sorcerer, he just has a role to play in Jujutsu society. The techniques and domains we talked about today are designed for Yuji to fill that role, not to be the next strongest sorcerer, because that's obviously Miwa. Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in a few days for another one.